Propellers are up. Push up on the controller. Woo, look at that bad boy. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's a Swell Pro Fisherman Max. We're gonna do a flight test today and it's perfect because it is raining really dang hard right now at my house. And I thought it'd be a great first flight to show you what it's all about. Take it up in the rain, see how it does in this hard rain. Finally raining in the Southwest. It's been raining all day. I wanna get it up before this hard rain stops. So let's get started with the flight test of the Swell Pro Fisherman Max. Waterproof, high lift, heavyweight lifting drone. Let's do it. Okay guys, so if you missed my unboxing, make sure you check that out. I'll have a pop up here in the right hand top corner and also check down in the description down below. That will really help you in setting this thing up. I'm just going to do a quick setup. Now this thing comes with a 4K one axis camera gimbal that you can pivot down. I do have a video card in there, so we're gonna get some video of this as well. And let's just do a quick setup, see how fast we can set this up. Carbon fiber arms, you just screw them on tight. You gotta do all four. <clears throat> and the way this thing opens up is it only can open up one way. You've gotta do the bottom first and then the top. Then you just cinch these down nice and tight with these collars here. I like it because it, it's a little more compact. You actually get about 10 inches more length on this one than you do the other Swell Pro drones. And you gotta lock off these antennas any way you want. Now this thing is literally ready to power up. You just gotta put on our propellers. So this might be good so you guys know kind of how long this takes. These are screw on and lock propellers. They just have these locking collars. So get those on nice and tight. And then we grab one that has the orange dot means it's the reverse thread. So this goes counterclockwise to tighten. I wanna give those a good finger tightening. And then we got two more for the rear. And super important, make sure the battery slides in from the top. Make sure these are all pushed all the way down and locked. It has an unlock and lock. And unlock always shows yellow. So make sure that yellow is covered up and it's all locked good. This thing's ready to get wet. So I'm gonna take it out here and turn it on. Woo, yeah, it's raining. Let's actually put it right in this puddle of water and turn this bad boy on. And I'll turn on the controller real quick. So press, press and hold on that bottom power. Just quickly boots up, quickly get our controller out. Now this is also a waterproof controller from Swell Pro. And this I'm gonna turn on right away. Click, click and hold on the power. And you can hear that voice. It's telling me to make sure all the switches are toggled up. Once you do all that, it connects no problem. Jeez, look at that water puddle it's in. So if you do want to use your phone to have like the telemetry on your phone or do any automated flights, you kind of have to install this. Now, this is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine is you have to put this, this phone mount on every time. You can't like store it in the case without putting this phone mount on. So it would be nice if there was just a little bit more of a slot to leave the phone mount on, you know? but that's not a huge deal. You just have to slide your phone in, squeeze her tight, and then lock it down with this bottom screw. I showed all this stuff in the unboxing and the setup, guys, so make sure you check that out. We'll take a photo by just clicking this button down real quick, and then we'll bring it all the way down to video. There we go, so it's recording in 2.7K at 60 frames per second. Let's get this app going on the phone. And for this, you have to connect, remember, to the Swell Pro wireless. You gotta get it off of your home wireless and you have to go to SWP. I showed how to connect to all this and set it up in the unboxing as well. And once you're connected with your wireless, basically your phone to your controller and the controller is connecting to the drone, let's hit connect here. And this way, check it out. We can see a map. You can preload the maps if you want. It has a preload function in here. It showed that in the unboxing as well, compass. So I'm not gonna record the screen on this, but you guys should be able to see this. All right, so let's get, <laughs> let's try this out. So I wanna launch, not doing any payload right now. I'm in normal mode. It has the normal and return to home here. GPS cruise or Addy mode, I wanna leave it in GPS. Camera up and down with these buttons. As you can see, I'm pushing down. Geez, look how wet it is out there. 
I'm pushing up and that's for your camera control. I'm taking video and I'm not using payload. Okay, that's pretty much all I wanna do here. The one thing I'm talking to Swell Pro about is trying to get this not to sleep. For some reason it sleeps on my phone if you're using this FD Fly app. It's not supposed to sleep, it's supposed to stay open, but for some reason my phone sleeps, so I gotta keep like pressing it or turning it back on. But it is connected, it's showing us the location of the drone here, and then you have all your automated flight options if you wanted to. So I'm gonna go out here. I know I'm getting my phone kind of wet, but I want you guys to see how it is launching. So both sticks down and in. Aircraft unlocked. You hear that? Aircraft unlocked, propellers are up. Push up on the controller. <laughs> Woo, look at that bad boy. So you just have to push up really slowly and it will just launch to about this altitude seems like it's about eight feet. So let me get back in the dryness here. I'm getting my phone all wet and everything. I'll kind of show you guys what I'm doing here. On my hat cam, I do have the waterproof Osmo Action 4. I am also reviewing, so check that out if you want. So let's fly this thing. So basically, it's really easy. It's just like a regular drone. Uh, we are flying in some pretty gnarly rain right now. I'm gonna fly it towards the house a little bit. So you know your basic yaw left and right, you're turning the head, and forward and back, and up and down, you know? Altitude, and descending. And that's basically it. It doesn't have any cameras on the bottom, right? So with these drones, since it has that barometer, it's gonna float around a little up and down. It's not as stable as say, like DJI, you see how it's going up on its own that has cameras that see the ground. So you're kind of trading off it being waterproof with just a barometer inside that's trying to maintain the pressure for altitude, right? So guys, we're recording and let's go ahead and fly out here. Before I do that though, I want you guys to see a little closer. I wanna be kind of careful not to get too close. And I want you to hear the sound. I mean, it's loud, but it has a low hum, you know? So here it is. Now those propellers are massive, so you gotta be careful and stay away from it. Remember, um, camera up and down, just pressing that button so I can rotate it. Awesome. So what we'll do is we'll do this rain test. I'm just gonna go straight out into the countryside here. I guess it's a rain and range test, so let's go. Pressing forward and pressing up. Get over these trees over there and let's just fly out. So you can see how we're going above the trees. Look how foggy it is and stuff. Oh, let me wipe the screen off actually. And I wanna pitch the camera down a little so we can get a little more view of the land here. You can see that water just, the rain just coming down, man. And you can see the screen here. I went over this in the unboxing and setup as well, but it shows you all the telemetry, the power of your controller, power of the craft, your degree of your compass, your horizon line, and then your speeds in meters per second. Couldn't figure out a way how to get it in like feet per second or miles per hour. And then you have your GPS coordinates down here. So you have all that stuff. And then if you wanted to have it on your phone too, it's also telling you your coordinates and all the distance and speed as well on your phone. You don't have to have your phone connected, but it's nice to have that in case you want to, you know, do automated missions and you want to also have more telemetry up there. So let's go up to um, a pretty good altitude. Man, it is coming down. I don't know if you guys can see this, but oh my gosh. So we're going to get up to about, say about 100 meters, just so we have some pretty good reception, right? So there's the FPV screen. So remember it's analog FPV. Uh, geez, it's foggy up here. So this is as good as footage I can get. And remember the screen isn't like DJI FPV video link. It is analog, just like older analog FPV technology. And here we go. So we're gonna fly out here and just keep in mind there on the uh, screen, I'm gonna be calling out like the distances and stuff. I wish my phone didn't keep sleeping, but that's just how it goes. So we're at um, 260 meters. Our height is 57 meters. Let's get up a little bit to around 100. We'll do a little pan to the left. Look at that water. Now we're, I guess we're facing more into the wind. 
So the water's really making that rain hit the front of it. And what I wanted to do guys, is I'm gonna fly forward and back really fast, just like rocket forward and back. And let's take a look at that gimbal. It is only one axis, but let's see what it does. Forward, back. So I'm really cranking this thing full speed forward, full speed back. And you see how it's trying to stabilize that vertical axis. But as I do this rock, watch this, I'm gonna rock left and right. There's no stabilization, you see? It's just the camera's digital stabilization if you have that on. So all you get is that one access, but this is mainly a fishing drone, so you're not really worried too much about footage, right? You can get a different camera or a different drone if you wanted to really get good footage. So I've just tilted the camera all the way down and just holding this down button. And this is what you're gonna wanna use when you're using these payload drops, right? So you have pay payload A and B, which is awesome because you can drop two payloads at different times. And you can also drop them automated in the automated flight app, the FD Fly, which is awesome. You can tell it which payload to drop at each location. And you can even punch in the coordinates for those payloads. So a lot of options there, but this is just how you drop payloads. So that's A. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you anything on the screen, like what you're dropping, because there's no real digital link to notify you what's going on. So say I drop A there. I wanted to move over to the right. I'm just flying hard right. And then right here in this opening. And remember, it's pouring rain right now, guys. You can probably hear it, hopefully. Say in this opening, I want to drop payload B. I would hit B on the controller right there and drop that payload B off. And then back up closes the entire payload mechanism, right? So that's how it is kind of like just working in the rain. Uh, let's go up with the gimbal again. Good news is I'm noticing not really any fogging. This is just the, f the fog of the rain and the clouds. This isn't any camera fogging yet. And I'm about 7,500 feet altitude right now, guys. So this is working way up here in the mountains. Let's do this. Okay, so my house here is around 277 degrees and I wanna turn it. Let's see if that shows up on the app here. If I locate the drone and I just go drone. You see how it located it out there? So there's the drone. I like how the arrow is showing which way it's pointing. So. The drone knows it's pointing this way at my house. Actually, it's not at my house, it's a little bit that way. Yeah, there's there's my house there. So it's actually pretty accurate. I'm gonna strafe to the right a bit. You can just see that rain hitting it hard. I really like how it is showing the true face of the drone with that little icon there. So that's actually good because then I can turn, I'm gonna turn the drone around, going away from the house. And I can look at my phone and I can see which way the drone's facing. And I'm gonna fly, straight out here and i'm going to show you how to use the cruise control okay so we're going ahead it's starting to let up a little bit on the rain here going ahead and pressing forward and you can engage and disengage the uh, cruise control at any time so up here on the right you see we're gps cruise addy i'm going to hit cruise so cruise middle mode. it just said cruise mode did you hear that gps mode i really like the voice on this thing so we're in cruise mode. It's not going to do anything until you start pushing forward on the stick. So I'm slightly pushing forward. Looking at that video, I'm letting off the stick and watch what it does with the speed. Horizontal speed is going 3.6 meters per second now and I'm not touching anything, right? It's just going to keep going. I'm going to push it all the way up for maximum speed. Let's see how fast it can go. Horizontal speed, looks like we're maxing at about 10 meters per second. And look at that FPV, it's starting to really get really bad, especially since we're flying in the rain and stuff. So I'm gonna actually pick up the drone a little bit. Yeah, see, that's the negative about having analog FPV. It's just, it starts to get really bad. Look at that, I can't even see it much anymore. So line of sight's gonna be really important on this thing. I mean, it's made for fishing, so you're probably not gonna have anything in the way. I'm gonna take off cruise by just hitting GPS. And the drone is automatically stopping, okay? Let's go check out our phone again, and we can see how far the drone is out there. So we're at 888 meters, and this isn't really a good line of sight. You can see there's some trees blocking it, right? 
kind of in my driveway. So that FPV is really bad on the screen. I'm gonna pick it up a little more, maybe about 100 meters. Let's see if that, there we go. We're getting a little bit better, 108 meters. You see how the video is slightly coming back. Let's try to turn the craft and see if we get any better angles. Yeah, so pretty dang uh, bad screen here. <laughs> So it looks like in this situation, maybe about a thousand meters, I could probably go a little bit further, is what the video is gonna be in kind of a encumbered area where it's blocking the signal. So what it should do is when it disconnects, guys, it should turn around and do an automatic return to home. Let's see if it does that. I'm gonna try to fly out a little bit more. So I'm pressing forward again. So flying out here, now we're still in good digital connection. Uh, with one of the antennas actually has a digital from the controller for the telemetry, right? So it's using some kind of digital for the telemetry. So I've totally completely lost a visual and that's probably... Aircraft, aircraft connected. Aircraft disconnect. Aircraft, aircraft connected. Aircraft disconnect. Aircraft disconnected. Yeah, so we're... Aircraft disconnect. There it goes. So I see it turn around. So when it disconnected, it was kind of going in and out of connection, but check it out now on the phone screen. It has turned around and I can see at least the digital telemetry connection is still connected more so even than the controller control and the video screen. So that's good. At least I can see what the craft is doing, where it is, even though the video isn't that great at that distance. So now we're starting to get our video sort of back in here. I should be pointing right at it. You can see the video there on the screen is coming back in. And let's let's just try to pull down while it's in return to home. So you see how it completely canceled that um, return to home as I pulled the uh, stick down. Let off the stick. Okay, so that's interesting. So I let off the stick. That just kind of canceled the auto return to home even though it was in the full GPS up position, right? So if I wanted to go to return to home and continue, after I put in some stick movements, I'll have to pull down return to home. and manually put it in return to home. So con here is they're still using the analog signal for video, right? So you're not gonna get anywhere near the um, clarity or FPV range as AkiSync in general. I think in their Swell Pro Splash Drone 4, they tried to use digital, like a Wi-Fi signal for video, but it didn't work out that too, too good. So it looks like they're going back to analog because it was really weird and kind of blotchy. But there we go. So you can see us cruising back home and uh, I'm gonna stop it right here just by clicking out of return to home. GPS mode. Tells you you're in GPS mode now. And now we can just fly as we wanted to. Looks like the rain's kind of letting up a little bit. Let's go down a bit and forward. I just kind of want to use this battery up and see what it does when it gets low. It should do like a return to home when the battery starts to get low. Let's see, do we got a river flowing here? That's pretty cool. Let's kind of go down a bit. Now, as I go down, I'm going to be punching through some trees with the signal, right? So um, if you look at here too, on the bottom, that's a compass as I rotate the controller. It's actually it should be using my phone compass to show me that little square in the middle, which way I'm facing compared to the drone. So if I turn to the right, you see how the drone is now going more in front of me. And if you look at the um, screen here, you can actually see a little blue arrow where you are. And as I rotate my controller, that little blue arrow. So at least we do have the more of the um, advanced features of um, digital on the phone, you know. Let's go down just a little bit and let's see if we can see some of this river here. So we're gonna kind of go forward, try to keep it facing the drone as much as possible. And this is where analog signal really just starts to get crappy when you start going behind trees and the trees are blocking the signal, okay? So you can see the screen is just horrible. You know, I'm trying to, I wanted to go down and find this river, but I can barely see the video. So it's not entirely that useful when you're this at this distance. Fishing is a different story because you just have the ocean, hopefully, wherever you are. Let's just kind of follow this down. At least we're getting recorded video on the craft and that shouldn't have any fuzziness because that's the, a full digital video. So these are like the trails right outside of my house. I'm just kind of following this trail in reverse manually back to the house. Here we go. So just checking out the trail. 
Definitely want to be careful of those telephone lines. Bringing the camera back up a bit. There's the homestead. Aircraft low battery. Okay. Please return to home. You hear that? Low battery. Let's see what happens. Aircraft low battery. Please return to home. It seemed like Aircraft right at low battery. Please return to home. 21.9 volts right here on the screen. Return to home. And it immediately, that was only about 10 seconds. Aircraft low battery. And now it's returning to home automatically. I can see it on my phone screen. I can see it on the video up there. Let's tilt this camera down. So I'm going all the way down. And this is probably where you want to switch your antennas down all the way. So you have that perpendicular. The video got a little better. It was kind of scratchy when the antennas were up like this. I guess it's, it's super close, so it doesn't really matter that much. So that was a fully automated on its own return to home when the battery got low. And it looks like it's in pretty much the same spot. Let's see how accurate that was. Just kind of in that puddle over there. Coming in. Awesome, guys. Yeah, the rain kind of let up. It's just kind of sprinkling right now. Nice. Let's see how good it is at landing. Very nice. And it shuts off the propellers right away. I heard aircraft locked when it shut off the propeller. So we have a great voice feedback here that's telling you pretty much everything that's going on. The only thing it doesn't do is tell you your payload or your photo and video, but it tells you if you're in normal or return to home. And it tells you if you're in GPS cruise and Addy. And of course it tells you if it's low battery, return to home and all that stuff. So let's kind of talk about a pros and cons here. I've got 22.2 volts on the screen here. So it looks like it's going to want to return to home. Whoops, I just pressed a waypoint. That's how you can do waypoint flight with this app guys is you just click your waypoints, right? Boom, you can do one. I showed this in the unboxing or multiple. And the cool thing is check that out. You click on one of the waypoints and you look at this, you can tell it which payload to drop. You can tell it what height you want. How, how long you want it to hover and what the latitude and longitude are exactly. And you can change that exactly if you wanted to. So if you had a latitude and longitude number from somebody else, you could pop that in and you could do your payloads at that latitude and longitude. Say you wanted to drop some supplies, right? At a location, and your friend's stuck in the forest. He has a cell phone. He knows his coordinates. You put up a, I don't know, flare gun, medical supplies, food. This thing can carry six pounds consistently. Over that, you probably are going to be draining too much amperage on the battery. So six pounds of supplies, your friends, you know, miles out. Now this thing will fly farther and we're going to try that with the, I'm going to do another automated flight test. Uh, it will fly farther than the video and connection of the controller signal has if you do automated flight. So we're gonna test that out. But what I was saying is if you had a package, lift off, punch in the exact coordinates here that your friend's at on the phone, and it will go there, it will drop the payload, even if it's out of connection with the controller and everything, and it will come back. So that's one great thing about this drone versus like the Splash Drone 4. It can do just about twice the poundage. I think the Splash Drone 4 could do like three or four pounds. This can do, six pounds safety, like I was saying, but we're going to test like, you know, if it can lift more and how that affects the battery power in another review. But I just want to get this first battery spent on the uh, Swell Pro Fisherman Max. I think that was a good first test and a good maiden flight. And remember guys, this thing isn't a toy. <laughs> Look at this thing. It's gigantic. It's got huge, sharp carbon fiber propellers. All right, let's get it back over here to my truck. And uh, I want to kind of open this up and let's see if it has any water in it, right? Looks like the controller's fine. It kind of maintained in some rain. I don't see any problems with it glitching out from rain getting into it. As you can see, I was walking in the rain there to kind of launch it. And this thing got pretty wet. You know, it's got puddles in the control stick, seals, and all of these toggles are sealed as well all the buttons and then you have your antenna connections the antenna connections don't look like they're as sealed as the rest of them and that's kind of what they've always done controller did fine we got that charge port on the bottom did good everything looks fine on the controller okay guys and after you're flying take off the propellers and dunk it in some fresh water now i just have a pond here 
little pool for my little one and a half year old Taika, his, my son, especially if you guys are flying in salt water. And most of you guys will be flying in salt water if you buy a fishing drone of this size. Yeah, you can do some freshwater fishing, but I'm sure the majority of people want to drop big baits in the ocean. So super important to dunk your drone in the water. I don't have the floaties on right now, so it should sink. Let's see what it does. This is the first time I've ever dunked it down in. Just gotta make sure, there you go. Yeah, so it'll sink without the floaties there. You can see little monster truck there in the video. I do have the video recording. And then just see if you can power it on and we wanna spin those motors up and get the water flowing through everything and kind of flush that salt water out, right? So let's give it a try. Let's go ahead and power it up. So I guess it knows it's maybe in water and it won't arm. I don't know. Let's try to arm it out of water and put it in the water. Aircraft unlocked. There we go. So motors spin up. Let's try this. Yeah. There we go. So that's what you want to do if you fly it in salt water. Like if you land in salt water, I'd even do this if you're close to salt water. There we go, there's our <laughs> little boy's monster trucks in the camera. Camera does work underwater. We're gonna open this thing up, see if there's any water in it after we're done with this. So you can land in the water, just make sure you have those floaties on. It looks like it'll kind of float, but it's just barely under the surface without the floaties on, which is kind of risky. But just do this, dunk it down, you know, get all those motors really flushed out with fresh water, and uh, that should really maintain your drone. So far, so good though. Let's see if we can disarm in the water. Yeah, so we can just pull down actually on the controller. And there we go, it disarms. So really make sure you do that guys. If you're flying anywhere near salt water, if, even if there's salt air you're flying in for a while or salt water in general, you know, if you're flying in the rain, no need because the rain is uh, fresh water, right? But there you go. That's kind of how to clean your drone out and then just really let it dry for a long time. Let's see if there's any uh, water stuck in this thing in the battery compartment. So if you guys are gonna be taking this in the water, it's really important, especially since this is on the top, the battery's on the top, really wipe this thing dry before you attempt to open this up. So, whoops, this is what I should be doing is taking these off first. Okay, so I actually wanna turn off the drone. And you see these lights on the bottom? I forgot to show these. So green and red, and check that out. So really bright bottom lights, and that's pretty much all you got except for the little camera light on the back on the drone for lights. And then we wanna turn it off, press, press and hold, and it just turns off pretty quick, kinda like other drones you would, that's press, press and hold sequence. So I was continuing to dry this. Really just wanna get it as dry as possible around this side seam the top seams and the whole top, just so when you take this thing off, not getting any water in there. So let's see if anything leaked in. So you unlock the whole thing. And what I find is the best way to do this is these. there's these little edges on the left and right side of these locks. And you wanna kinda brace your fingers on this part of the arms, like the beginning of the arms, and just kinda like wiggle it up. That seems to be the best way. So awesome, so seals are all dry. That was just some water from my finger. You see how I was saying it's really important to get all that water out because there's some water sitting on the very edge of the outside, little droplets here, but nothing got at all inside the battery compartment where it's important not to get. So this thing was sealed very good from that crazy downpour for a full battery. So I could see this would be pretty amazing for search and rescue. Not so much for the range of the video, as you can see, or control, but like I said, if the person you're trying to help knows its GPS coordinates or can share their location, something like this, pouring rain, snow, whatever, this would be great to help them out with supplies. And remember guys, we're gonna try that test next. We're going to do a uh, lift test. So we're gonna see how much this thing can lift and how long it can fly for. I will have had the flight time of this flight pop up there uh, just for this initial maiden flight. Now this is the first charge on the battery, so I don't expect it to be that long, especially in that crazy rain we were just flying in because of course rain and all that stuff is going to lessen the flight time because the propellers are cutting through that rain, right? creating drag. But we're gonna do a lift test on this. We're gonna do a uh, automated flight test. We'll do the payload drops 
and then we'll go out and ride a bike out to where it was supposed to drop them and see if those payload drops are there and see how good that actually did, okay? So that's gonna be in another video coming up. I'm doing a lot with this thing. So this is the first flight test in the whole series. I hope you enjoyed it and it was informative for you guys. Don't forget down in the description down below is where you can check this out and buy it if you liked what you see here. And also you can check out my other videos and other gear I use in my videos. But so far I'm kind of impressed with this thing. I mean, quick little pros and cons, like I was saying, older FPV technology, analog, you know, you don't get the digital FPV like a DJI would do. And man, if they could somehow get that technology in this thing, that would be so amazing with the FPV and stuff because that would just really bring it to a new level because not many companies are doing waterproof drones right? So if they can incorporate better digital technology into these drones, they would really have a winner here. But that's kind of the only thing holding it back is that scratchy analog FPV and that kind of gives you the short range and stuff. So that's how it performed for me in this environment. Remember, we got a lot of trees blocking us. If it was a line of sight test, which actually I'm going to do, that hill over here, I'm going to go ahead and do a range test on this for direct line of sight just to see how far it can go. So don't miss that video either. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to let you go now and let's do some more testing on the Swell Pro Fisherman Max. See you in the next one. Thanks for watching.